15 million years ago, Issaquah's now familiar topography began to take shape. The Earth's crust was pushed up to create Cougar, Squawk, and Tiger Mountain. Named the Issaquah Alps, these mountains were nearly twice as tall as they are today. They weathered and eroded slowly to their present height over the millennia. Today's Lake Sammamish is an artifact of a much larger lake, Glacial Lake Sammamish, which covered the Issaquah Valley in 4,000 feet of water. This glacial lake was held in place by a large plug of ice located near the foot of Tiger Mountain, just below today's Poo Poo Point. Roughly 12,000 years ago, this ice plug suddenly collapsed, sending the water of glacial Lake Sammamish swirling out of its basin like a bathtub draining. A broad, flat valley was left in its wake. Thousands of years passed. Native Americans from the Coast Salish or La Chutzid culture inhabited the Issaquah Valley for hundreds of years. They built a long house where Issaquah Creek meets Lake Sammamish and harvested food from the bounty of the lake and nearby hills. Cedar trees in particular provided materials with which to construct homes, craft beaten bark into waterproof clothing, and carve canoes. They called this area Ishqua, which means the sound of water birds. Starting in the 1860s, white settlers began to make their way into the valley. The settlers found that the broad, flat valley was well suited to farming. The mountains also offered up natural resources. Like the earliest Native American settlers, Issaquans depended on hunting and fishing to supplement their diet. The forests yielded deer, bear, and other game, while the neighboring creeks and lake provided a variety of fish. Coal was critical to the economy in the late 1800s. The coal deposits found on Squawk Mountain inspired businessmen to establish rail service to Issaquah. Coal was also found at Grand Ridge. The availability of coal mining jobs in Issaquah brought new residents from all over the nation and all over the world. Like coal, the massive old growth forests that covered the Issaquah Alps were also sought after. In 1889, the Great Seattle Fire decimated the fledgling city. Efforts to rebuild Seattle required lumber from far afield, including lumber from the mountains around Issaquah. Logging camps sprang up around the mountains. Poo Poo Point on Tiger Mountain was named for the sound of the steam whistle warning workers that the steam-powered donkey engine was about to fire up. While coal and lumber were harvested from Issaquah's hillsides, the broad, fertile valley proved ideal for dairy farming. By the mid-20th century, many Issaquans worked in one of the local dairy farms or at the Alpine Dairy, today's dairy gold. In 1937, Issaquah Salmon Hatchery opened. Built through the Works Progress Administration, the project provided local employment and bolstered the local salmon population. As the automobile came into greater use, life in Issaquah began to change. Operating a small family farm became more difficult, while land values rose. The construction of new roads, like Interstate 90, changed the familiar landscape. New housing developments began to crop up on the hillsides where early settlers once mined coal and cut lumber. Today, people are still drawn to Issaquah for its natural resources. Rather than mining coal, harvesting timber, or farming, we now walk outside to hike, mountain bike, kayak, paraglide, and enjoy the annual Salmon Days Festival, celebrating the return of coho, chinook, and sockeye salmon to our local streams and creeks every fall. Many things have changed over the past 125 years, but Issaquah's natural beauty and sense of community are timeless.